motivation eventually runs out. Inspiration comes from within yourself. Go on, but then there's my, my friends, and we always had deep conversations too. You know, it was my it was my friend's baby shower on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So we went to that, he's like my age. And we, we grew up together, he's my cousin too. Um, and I've known him since kindergarten. I know most of my friends since kindergarten. Um, but we really got close in high school and everything like that. And he's been through he's been through a lot and everything. So he found he finally found a girl a year ago or something like that. I don't know how long they were there actually. But <laughs> they're close. They, they're close, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and now they're having a kid that's gonna pop out at the end of this month. And that's just crazy. We did call it though that he would be the first one to be a father. <laughs> like you're gonna be the first one to, to have a kid. He's like, nah, but yeah. I'm really happy for him. He's he's He's, he's learned a lot. Yeah. He's been through a lot and he's learned a lot. And that's, that's like the best thing, you know? Yeah. People can go through a lot, but it's just like, if you don't learn something from it, it's just like all that you just took for no reason. You know, you gotta make something from a bad situation, mm -hmm. from any situation. Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> I'm actually missing my friend. The only friend I have left from high school, I'm missing her baby shower because of the grappling tournament. And uh, last time I saw her, she gave me a card and stuff. And the card said, um, for 15 years, you've been the constant in my life, and now I want my son to have a constant too. Mm -hmm. And then it, it was like a note from the baby mm -hmm. that said, will you be my godfather? Mm -hmm. You know, so I was like, oh. And we didn't, we didn't have, we don't like, you know, I'm not the, the mushy, emotional type, and neither is she. And I think that's why she's the only friend that I have left, because it's like everything else. I, I lost a lot of friends when I started training, because once I made a commitment to it, I missed out on all the parties, I missed out on all the dinners and stuff because I, I was here because I wanted to be better. And she's the only one out of all the friends that I had that kind of really understood why I was doing it. She came to, when, when I took over as owner, she was here for the grand opening and stuff and now she's having a baby and stuff and she asked me to be the godfather and stuff. So stuff is like that's cool, but it's like when, when I was going through some shit, she was there. When she was going through some shit, I was there, you know, because, and like you said, if you don't learn from it, and what the fuck's the point, right? You know, so that's kind of how I want to go about life. And I, I, I was a very angry person. I, I was very hard to deal with. I had not the best friend in growing up and stuff. Um, but this stuff, once I started kind of taking what I learned in training and started applying it to my life, that's when things started changing for me. I started getting less angry. I knew when to walk away from certain situations, when to fight a little bit. I learned when to fight for the right people and be loyal to the right people and stuff. Because when you're going for a submission, right? The submission works. You know the submission works. You've done it in practice so many times. You're squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. But for whatever reason, you're off by a few centimeters. They're doing what they're supposed to be doing to defend it. You're not going to hold on to that. You're going to transition to something else. And if you find it again, awesome. You find it again and it works a little bit better. But if you hold on, maybe to the right thing, but at the wrong time, sometimes that's bad too. You know, so those things I kind of took from training and started applying it to my life. To just to be less angry, you know, and, and that's kind of where we all, and I tell people all the time, we all come from different backgrounds, different races, different upbringings, different generations, different ages, different family types, but we all come together here. You know, so the part that really fascinates me about this stuff and, and, and the reason I love this place is because no matter where we all came from, we're all working together to make each other better on the mats and off the mats. And I see that, you know, when, when Nene tested for her black belt and everyone stuck around after, when we have these events and people show up to the events and stuff, and when people stick together and they want to see each other grow. And I hear, you know, people hanging out outside of here. That's, that stuff makes me happy, you know, because we're getting somewhere all types of different backgrounds coming together and that's the part that that fascinates me and it's just I, I'm I get a little curious as to where everybody came from and what led them to here you know so and, and then from there if if you guys have seen any difference from your first day here to when to now Essentially, you've been training with us for what six six months seven months Three, seven months seven months so have it, what has training done for you in just seven months? Um, in terms of here, I've gotten a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I didn't notice that I've gotten a lot better, but I've gotten a lot better. Yes. Just like <laughs> being in class, I was, <laughs> you know, that, I beat them up, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I've gotten a lot better. 
Uh, my confidence has grown a little bit more. My talking skills have gotten a little bit more. I'm just overall more confident and I'm overall more happy um, in terms of like me going for it because I've been wanting to do like boxing or kickboxing ever since I was like probably in eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And it was mainly just because any other reason why someone wanted to learn how to fight is to just defend themselves. You yeah. Know? You know, from like scary situations, you know, you just don't want to be in scary situations. Some people just like to run away. I like to like, if I'm ever in that position, I need to, I need to, I need to stand my ground. You know? Yeah. But it's just like when you don't know how to stand your ground, it's hard. It's just, you gotta go. You know, and that's how I was. So I, I, I remember when I was in sophomore year, I wanted to sign up for like uh, kickboxing. I was gonna sign up for boxing first and go into kickboxing. Um, the only reason why we didn't do it is because money was tight. Um, and the classes were, were expensive from the gym that I was at, so I never did that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I remember that I wanted to do it for a long time. And I, I did it mainly because I had to do an elective in school. But that's why I joined rugby instead. Yeah. So I did rugby. Um, I never been good at sports. I never been really good at sports. I never been the athletic type. I always been that big boy, mm -hmm. you know, that plays sports bad. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Um, in eighth grade until high school, I wasn't even that good at rugby. If I had to say, I liked the sport, and it was probably the sport that I like stuck my ground to a little bit because it was like it was okay, you know. Um, and then in the beginning of 2020, that's when I started the fitness thing, and I didn't tell anybody about that. I didn't even tell my friends about that. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just mainly me just going, I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna put in the work, and I'm just gonna keep it to myself because. I remember I did tell a few people that I was gonna sign up for boxing. You know, I like, like just going up to them, I'm like, I'm gonna sign up for boxing, bro. And like, I didn't get the response that I needed, like that I wanted. Yeah. You know, they would be like, Pfft. you know, they couldn't see it. Was, How much did you weigh at that time? Like, I was always big. So I think my heaviest, I was like in senior year, going into senior year, because I gained a lot of weight that summer, because I recently got a girlfriend and we were just going out and eating. <laughs> so it was a lot of happy weight, I guess. <laughs> but I got really big. I was like, in sophomore year, I really got into decent shape because I did ROTC and CrossFit. Mm -hmm. uh, junior year, I did a lot of rugby. And then that summer, going into senior year is when I got chubby. I didn't really go out and hang out with my friends as much to go play or, or play sports or anything like that because I was always with her. So we were just hanging out and eating. So I got really big. And I never weighed myself, to be honest, because I was always scared <laughs> to get that scale. But I want to say I have an ID and like the person just wrote 200 pounds. I'm okay. pretty sure I was more than that. And it wasn't like, it was just 200 pounds of just fat, that's it. You know, my arms were skinny. I was like in that skinny, skinny fat. Skinny fats. fat? Yeah, so my arms were skinny, my legs were skinny. It was just a bunch of toys. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was hard to get out of a little bit because I developed like a whole uh, eating disorder, a binge eating disorder. So I used to just constantly eat and everything like that. I used to bounce a soda on my stomach, I remember. Because I had like the whole living room downstairs in the basement. I used to do that. I'm like, it's lit. But I never felt like i did feel insecure about it but not like too deeply like depressed about it or anything mm -hmm. like that um going into the fitness thing i i still wanted to do fitness even before that whole thing but then i finally sink my teeth in because it was just like i've always known that i wanted to be athletic you know i like doing i like running even though i say i hate it but once i started doing it and, you, and you're done with it you feel so great and that's that's what i always like going into anything you know, but, and then when I started my fitness thing, it was just constant. I just made up my mind. I didn't think about it, I just did it. Like I said, I didn't tell anybody, I just told myself I'm gonna do it, and I did it. Mm -hmm. And I realized that's how you just get, that's how you get shit done. Yeah. You, know, you just do it, you don't talk about it, you don't think about doing it, you just go do it. Yeah. You, know, you don't tell anybody, because you're probably not gonna get the response that you like. Even if you do, it's not gonna do anything. Um, I really do believe that like, everybody can be on your side or not be on your side. Mm -hmm. But as long as you, you're not like willing to do it, you know, then it's just not gonna happen. So I just did it. And then I knew going into the fitness thing that I was training to do this. You know, I told myself, I'm like, I don't wanna just be in shape or anything like that. I mean, it'd be, it'd be good, but I don't wanna just, you know, be big and mm -hmm. have like muscles and have that aesthetic. I wanna do something with my body. And I know I wanted to get into martial arts. Yeah. Um, at that time, so that's why I did the gym and then at a certain period when I ended my cutting and I was pretty athletic, I was just like, okay, I'm ready to go into MMA. Um, at first it was going to be boxing or kickboxing, mm -hmm. but then I got introduced to the UFC, like really late, <laughs> like really late too. It was like around when I think Conor McGregor was going to fight like Khabib 
So it was like around that's, that time. That's yeah. like two years ago, three years ago. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> when I really got into MMA. That's when I got introduced. I'm just like, man, this is cool, you know? Because mm -hmm. it was just like, like I said, like boxing is like one thing, but it's just like, what if someone takes you down? I yeah. always thought about like, like in the street and everything like that. So yeah. that's why I was just like, MMA is like everything, you know? So that's why I mainly signed up for MMA. Just do what I wanted to do. And do you feel like the, the MMA training side was, was super different from what you were already doing? Like, did you feel like the, the, the fitness journey that you had started was affected by your MMA training? No. 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 I mean, going into here, I knew what I was getting myself into. I mm -hmm. knew there was going to be explosive movements, body weight movements, a lot of just conditioning, mainly, you know, just moving a lot. Did you make any adjustments to your, your fitness routine from after yeah. starting here? Yeah, I, from January to March, I bulked up and that was, I tried to bulk up. Like I said, I never weighed myself or anything like that. I didn't, I, I was so scared to like weigh myself in the beginning because I was just like, it's going to demotivate me. I'm just going to do it, like mm -hmm. I said. So it wasn't until like the end of March that I got myself a scale and I weighed myself. And at the end I weighed like 185. And then from March all the way down to basically September when I started here, is I was I was doing a whole cut, but I was trying to I did it slow, and I did it just pacing myself a little bit. It was just like one pound every week. That's it, you know. And it was um, that was when quarantine happened, yeah. so I'm like, this is gonna be hard, you know, because I know the gym is gonna close and it did close. It closed like April or something, yeah. and I'm just like, shit. Um, my dad had weights in his basement, and he had a whole bench, and he had the bar and everything like that. So I stood there until like June. And then me and him kind of just split off. So after that, I was kind of like on my own. I didn't have like a gym or anything like that. But like that didn't stop me either because I knew that I wanted to do it. I'm just like, when I come here, I know that it's not going to be weights or anything like mm -hmm. that. It's just going to be movements and everything. So I'm just like, okay. So I just did a lot of explosive conditioning in like my yard. Um, and my little brother was out there too. My little brother would help me out. I remember in rugby, we had like a game or whatever where like we would be in all fours and we'd have like two flags on our size and we would just play that in the backyard you know just moving around and everything like that so from there into September I weighed 170 and then I bulked up from September to like March again mm -hmm. and I weighed 190 and now I weighed myself this morning I weighed like 185 yeah. Yeah. when did you feel like this went from just something that you wanted to do you know, like you just got introduced to the UFC late, you know, so you're like, that's cool. Mm -hmm. And then I think it was about a month ago, you told me that you wanted to start taking it more seriously because you were looking at possibly competing in the future. Mm -hmm. um, when did that, when did you feel like that switched on you? Um, that you knew for a fact, all right, this is what I want to do. I think it was from the very beginning. From the very I beginning. Just, I just set my mind to it. You know, like I said, I don't tell anybody things until like, I feel like it's a good thing to yeah. tell people. You know, so coming in here, I knew that I wanted to compete, if I'm being completely honest. Mm -hmm. Coming in here in the beginning, it was hard at first, but, you know, and it was demotivating at first too in the beginning class. I'm just like, this is, <laughs> this is harder than I thought. Like, really harder than I thought. And it still kind of is, but like, it's still something that I've been wanting to do. Like I said in the beginning, it was when I started seeing the UFC and I'm just like, yeah, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to do something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and that hasn't stopped. But yeah, it wasn't something that just like switched. It was just something that like, cause when I first saw it, like I said, I watched football, I played rugby, I tried baseball. Um, in school, they would try to, you know, they would introduce us to different sports, soccer, uh, basketball, um, but none of those sports really like, s s like sink my feet in or anything yeah. like that. I didn't feel confident on any of those until, until I started seeing like the boxing thing. That's when I really got introduced. Like I really just like focused in and I was really intrigued. You know, soccer games are boring to me, football games. Football games are okay. <laughs> Rugby games are pretty decent. But like when it comes to like MMA or like boxing or anything like that, I really just start paying attention. I get like synced in. And I don't really get much of that. You know, I used to be a kid that's, just, you know, I, I can't focus on one thing mm -hmm. at a time. You know, that's why I suck at school. <laughs> I just don't. They tell me to do something, my mind drifts off to a different place. But whenever I see like, you know, fighting or anything like that, I get really just into it. I don't see the small details like everybody else does. I just really just watch and observe. Yeah, well, you're still relatively new. That that took a while, you know. But is hearing your story is just 
it reminds me of me because I was the same way. I never liked playing sports. Um, I, I was a video game kid and then professional wrestling. Those were my two things growing up. You know, and for, for so long I, grew, I wanted to be a professional wrestler and stuff. And that's actually how I got into MMA is because Undertaker was my favorite. He used to watch MMA. And Brock Lesnar goes, switches from wrestling to, to UFC. So I was like, I'm gonna watch him. I watched him in WWE. Let's see what this stuff is. And instantly got hooked with it, you know? And I never really thought I was gonna get into it other than just a hobby, you know? And then it kind of just started taking off from there. And it was the same thing. Like I, I never told any, I would just tell people I'm at the gym, you know? And not like, I'm gonna make this into something. People knew I wanted to compete, you know? But the response I got, like you said, they didn't think I could do it because as a kid, I didn't even like being barefoot in the pool. So they didn't think like the sport was gonna be too hard. It was just, you had to be barefoot. Like what's, <laughs> how are you gonna make it? Um, but I wouldn't say anything. I, I used to get into arguments with my dad because he didn't understand it. I was just like, this is what I'm gonna do. You know, and I did it and I, and I made something out of it for myself. You know, people didn't necessarily support me at the beginning, but then once they saw that I was taking it seriously because I was a mediocre student too. I was, a C average student from sixth grade until I graduated college. But people didn't really see that, you know, and now hearing it from you and, and I remember the first day you came in and you're like, all right, I'm gonna do this. You told me what, you know, you asked so many questions about how many days a week, the competing process, all that stuff. And uh, you were even here after the classes were over. We kept talking for a little bit after everybody left and stuff. When you walked out of here, I told Carla, I was like, I don't think we're ever gonna see him again. <laughs> you know, because what our experience was, and still is, and, and which is why I'm, I wanted to talk to you because I, I, your story and the way that you've grown in the seven months almost proves that not everyone is the same. Because the people that come in the most eager are the first people to quit. And the first three months are so vital for us because if we can keep people consistent and build a routine and a lifestyle or start the foundation of a lifestyle in that first three months, we have a better chance of keeping people. If they can't get, those, get the ball rolling in those three months, we start losing people real quick. You know, and you went from the guy that I didn't think we were gonna see again to now seven months later, you're the guy that, I'm telling like, all right, this is, I, I spend a lot of time because I see a lot of potential in you. And it's potential that, I, I don't like the word potential because I've seen so, in the 11 years that I've been training, I've seen so many people with potential and I've seen so many people to just throw it away. So to me, potential doesn't mean anything until I started seeing something. And, and with you, I started seeing how much you were just absorbing everything that we threw at you. You never complained. You asked questions when you had questions and you just kept growing you started sparring and then people get beat up and then they don't want to spar anymore they leave they quit they're like all right this stuff doesn't work you whoever you sparred with you absorbed a little bit of it and you started asking questions and then you come to me as like this person kept doing this in this round how do i defend that how you know what is that and that's how you learn you know and, and you have that patience that a lot of people don't have and I think that's, and judging by what you just said is, that's what you, you've had before you got in here. Do you feel like training has made you, did you always realize that? Or did training kind of make you realize that? Um, I realized that before coming in. It was really just when I had a job, really. Um, I don't know how to explain it. I don't remember when it first started, but it was mainly when I started my job. And I think it was when I started working at the hotel because I never did anything like that. And I was very antisocial. Mm -hmm. I didn't even like people. I still kind of don't. That's why we punch people. Exactly. <laughs> but, um, but some people are interesting, you know, just yeah. the certain people that you click with, but certain people you just want to stay away from. And I learned how to just stay away from that. But um, yeah, it was really just in the hotel business, I guess, because it was like a lot of hospitality and it was so new to me. I never did hospitality. I was always mm -hmm. just like, oh, Mainly labor. I did labor, you know, mm -hmm. always to myself. But I went from laundry to front desk, and it was completely different. It was like more mentally drained and everything like that. I just had to make sure that I kept my head on straight because I knew it was hard. Um, but before, I used to 
the reason why I also don't tell a lot of people what I'm doing is because I hate that feeling when I tell someone I'm going to do something and then I don't do it. Mm -hmm. And then they come back and ask me and like, I feel like shit now. You know? <laughs> so I, I try to avoid that. So I'm just like, I'm not going to tell them, let me just do it. Let me try it. If I don't like it, that's okay. I move on to something else, mm -hmm. you know? But if like I tell somebody and I don't like it and I move on, or even if I feel like quitting, you know, they judge me for that. And it's just like, I don't need that. But, um, yeah, I don't, I don't really know. It was, um, I stopped running, I guess. Whenever things got hard, I would just do it. You know, I, I remember when I was little, I used to want to learn how to draw because I thought drawing was cool. And I tried drawing and I'm like, I suck at this. And I just stopped drawing. But there was one time though, I like stuck my teeth in and I really just wanted to draw. I wanted, I, I told myself something small. I'm just like, I'm just going to draw the bat symbol because I was really into Batman. Mm -hmm. I remember it took like a month maybe. And then I actually drew a really good bat symbol. And I drew it all by hand and I didn't trace or anything mm -hmm. like that. And I'm just like, that's game for me, you know? <laughs> and then, um, and then, yeah, I just finished it. I was just satisfied with it. I'm like, okay. And I think just by doing that, I learned. Um, but the hotel, like I said, it was hard. Like that, that, that was like, the system was hard too. Like learning it, I was so overwhelmed, but I'm just like, I have to do this. Cause if I don't, I don't have a job and I got bills to pay. So I just did it. And then I learned from that. And going into the fitness thing too, it was hard too. I think it wasn't until like 2019 in October when I finally took the guts to go on a bench and I tried bench pressing. And I, I did, I, the bar was hard for me. The bar itself was really hard for me. I think I did like 10 reps and I was gassed. Like my arms were noodles and everything. And I remember doing that, but I felt really happy because like I actually did it. You know, and then the next day I went, I went and did it. And I remember I, I would just go to the gym which was bad because what I did is I started going to the gym every single day and just bench pressing every single day, which is really bad. And I was just gassing out all my muscles and I wasn't stretching and I wasn't warming up or anything like that. So everything felt really tight and I felt that and I'm just like, I really, I don't want to give up on the bench press. So I fixed that and I fixed everything that goes with it. And now I'm here. Now I can bench like two, one, one plate on each side. I might get up to two plates one of these days, but two, one <laughs> plate on each side. I remember I couldn't, I did like 25s, I'm just like, I'm gonna get up to 45, and I did that. So it was just that. It was just like not letting anything stop me from doing what I want. Cause I had, a, I, I've been, you know, I waste my time a lot on that. Yeah. I think I told you, uh, we were talking at the desk one time after class and I told you you're so much farther ahead from a lot of people that I've seen mm -hmm. your age and like all the stuff that you're telling me is what Typically, I tell other people when they like I'm, I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with this is like You're you're already there, you know, so what what do you what do you feel like you got? More from after you started training or what in Training kind of clicked with you and was like all right. I'm I know this is the right right thing for me to do Like not necessarily like a technique but like any kind of concept that we've taught that we you, that you've done in sparring that kind of just resonates with you the most um, that you apply on the mats and then outside of here um i think learning just using everything that i had to my advantage because like um my height i have a pretty decent height but i don't have the longest arms mm -hmm. you know or the longest legs i'm more torso long mm -hmm. so there's people who are like rel relatively my height what is it like leo's kind of like my height a little bit taller than me but he has really got long, arms long arms and really mm -hmm. long legs so i remember he used to just he used to always just beat me in the reach every single time and he used to make me mad but like i said on saturday like i finally took leo down mm -hmm. and it was mainly just because i don't have the best ankles so i can't really shoot or i can't really get my knees in front of my toes mm -hmm. so i'm just like how am i going to take someone down without doing that i'm just like, i could just body lock someone because mm -hmm. i have a pretty decent grip i am I'm, I'm confident on my grip and i'm confident on my lifting skills too i'm pretty sure i can lift trayvon off the ground <laughs> but um yeah so i just did that and i know that leo has long arms so he, if he you know goes up a little bit it'll be easier for me to go and that's what i did and i got it down i'm just like okay so i just started uh, having that mindset of just like just just because I don't have long arms doesn't mean like, like it's over. You know I have to use my my advantage, my my what I have as my advantage. You know so that's that's what I did with everything really. You know 
um, I'm, I'm in a good spot, you know, financially. So that's what I'm really happy about, decently. And other than that, you know, um, I have a job and everything. There's a lot of people that don't have that right now. So I'm just mm -hmm. like, I use that to my advantage, you know. That's why I don't complain a lot. Because it's just like, I know things can get worse. You know, that's why I don't complain here. Whenever I do something that's like not the best, I could be like, it could be worse, you know. It could be way worse. But once I understand something, I just try to apply it. That, that's just really it, you know. Um, I try to just stay humble because I used to complain a lot. I used to complain a lot. And it used to piss people off. And it used to piss me off too because it's just like, if I keep on complaining, I'm never going to be happy. It's just like, just look at it the other way. You know, it could be worse. It could always be worse. So. You are the personification of, I, I don't know if I ever told you why I chose Warrior Evolution as the name of the gym. Did I tell you that? Yes, in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. So everyone that's here was a warrior before they got here. And then it's just trying, you know, anything that you've been through, everything that you've gone through, you've survived it, and now you're here. So we don't make warriors, we evolve them into stronger warriors. And we do that together. And with just knowing your present, and now knowing your past, you are exactly the type of students that I want to, to bring into this place. Because with the mindset that you had coming in and the mindset that you're continuing to evolve can help so many people, you know? And, and that's what I really enjoy about the sport because the sport you're never done learning. You're, there's, there's always something to be better at with the sport. And it's the same thing with life. We're learning every day. And the second we stop learning, we start dying. So with your mindset and, and helping, and now you got your, your little cousin in here and just that whole generation is going to grow even more because they have someone that they can relate to, someone that's closer in their age and, and just having people, no matter what your background is, no matter what you have, that can help at least just one other person. Because that one other person can start helping somebody else. You know, so it's the, awesome talking to you. Thank you for doing this and, and kind of being the launching point of what this is. Um, and without even knowing it, being the perfect personification of what we're trying to do at this gym. You came in with that mindset, you're growing the mindset, and hopefully you're going to pass on that mindset to future people. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.